Um, but yeah, so the next question is uh, a little bit more about the process. So can you explain the process of modeling the threats to privacy? So for example, what are the different steps that are usually need to be taken? I understand obviously this process is very different depending on the organization, on the product, on a whole variety of different things. But in general, what are the, the different steps that you usually take? Sure. Um, do I, will you? Yeah, yeah, you can start, Kim. Okay, I, I will continue with uh, Aram's analogy of, of getting to the airport maybe. So, um, well, basically, there's four steps, four questions. Um, they were coined by Adam Shostak, who wrote like the Bible on threat modeling. And it's uh, what are we working on? What can go wrong? What are we going to do about it? And um, did we do a good enough job? So the first thing is um, you, you visualize what you're working on. So you need to have a model of the system. In, in the scenario of uh, going to the airport, it's kind of visualizing the entire uh, trajectory of getting from Aram's home uh, to the airport. Um, and then the next step is what can go wrong. So clearly he didn't want to, to get there late. Um, so um, he was thinking of all the things that can, he just explained it. So I'm re-explaining his scenario where I had no part in, but like, the bus uh, running late, the uh, train being cancelled or getting some delay. That's all the stuff that you can think of up front that can go wrong. And then how will you fix it? How will you mitigate it? Well, you take some, um, some additional um, time, you take a backup train and so on. And the same applies to security and privacy threat modeling. You start with the, the, the model of the system. And then you go over each of the interactions of the elements there and you think what can go wrong from a security or from a privacy perspective. The tricky thing is that, well, in this example of the trains, we all know what can happen. Trains run late, get cancelled. But from a security and a privacy perspective, it's less obvious. You need to be an expert. Um, you need to have a lot of experience. Uh, the good thing is that there are, there are approaches such as Stride for security and Linden for privacy that bring this knowledge into the picture as, as a, an approach, as a process. So Stride has a lot of information on security issues that can go wrong, that are known. Linden does the same from a privacy perspective. By the way, Stride and uh, Linden are actually also acronyms for the different security and privacy categories for which they also provide information. So from the Linden perspective, it's linking, identifying, non-repudiation, detecting, um, this uh, data disclosure, unawareness, and non-compliance. So in these categories, that approach provides information on what can go wrong. And then that information, that knowledge can be used to analyze the specific system and determine all this stuff that can go wrong, does it apply to my specific system? And then in the next steps, you can you can further mitigate that. Um, Aram, feel free to. Uh... I, I think I think you yeah you really really covered everything. I just want to throw in some tribe knowledge or some uh, fun facts that uh, a bad threat model is still way better than no threat model. And typically, if you're a starting threat modeler. First of all, it is for an organization, you should probably uh, invite an expert because it could be challenging to do it. Um, on the other hand, you could also take various uh, courses, uh, sorry, trainings that are often organized with large security conferences like Black Hat, uh, all OWASP conferences and so on. Um, and yeah, I, I would say that, that the first, at the, at the lowest level of expertise, Threat modeling, you would just go through the mnemonics like Stride and Linden and try try to come up with threats based on those. And the further you mature, uh, the more advanced uh, strategies you can use. And of course, the, the expertise and, and an expert will come up with threats just like that versus somebody who uh, has no experience in threat modeling. He, he might not be very quick. Uh, it might take him more time. Yeah, yeah, it might sound overwhelming, especially if you read like the information on how to apply Stride or how to apply Linden. And ideally, you spend a lot of time actually um, 
analyzing the system, which can be for people getting started, like, I don't have the time, I cannot invest that much in it. But as Aram says, even the slightest additional effort you can do, even if you start with just 50 minutes of brainstorming and, and thinking of security and privacy issues there, it's already much better than not considering it at, at all. So build it up and, and go from from uh, tiny efforts to a, a, a well-integrated um, threat modeling program or, or practice. And, and by the way, we are mentioning now, you should do it, you should do it, you in a sense of the team. So yeah. that threat modeling should happen in a, in a group where at least your security, arch, your software architects are on board, your security champions, your development team. You can invite a lot, a lot of different kind of stakeholders, but those should be definitely in there. Your QA could as well participate. And actually, we, we did one, uh, we did a recent, uh, the recent threat modeling uh, exercise we did uh, recently. Uh, our QA uh, came up with quite some interesting threats, which nobody could think of. Um, yeah, and a side effect of having all those people around the table, which we hear a lot from other companies, is that that first step of threat modeling, knowing what you're working on, that system model, that that joint understanding of the system, is often something that is new to to those organizations because all those different um, profiles, they know bits and pieces, but getting that big picture and getting a, a mutual understanding, a mutual view on the system seems to be something that was not there yet. So in addition to having that great analysis of security and privacy, you get that joint understanding of the system and, and people really coming together and discuss that. So. Hey!